Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. We're, we're kicking off a new Sunday school class that I'm helping to start, and so that's why I was not in here earlier, as I normally am running around. So I hope uh, you'll show me some grace this morning. Uh, I'll be doing this for probably, uh, probably about three or four weeks, uh, getting that started and, and helping them launch that new Sunday school class. So thank you for your understanding. Uh, yes? Okay, talk to me afterwards if you're interested in that. I'll be glad to, uh, to get that out there. I thought that had already been put out. Pardon me. Very pardon me. All right, we want to welcome everybody to our service of worship this morning. If you would, uh, take a moment to pass the registration pads that are on the end of each row, and uh, we'll be glad to uh, uh, get a registration of your attendance this morning. While you're doing that, I'm going to uh, share in our announcements this morning. Uh, let's see, children's uh, ministry uh, events that are upcoming today at 3 o'clock. The kids are going to be at Lane's Chapel for the pumpkin patch. Uh, and the, the play, the, uh, they're going to play some pumpkin games and, and ride the pumpkin train and have a devotional. Uh, and then they'll caravan over to Andy's for a treat. Uh, and then Club 118, which is for our 4th through 6th graders, uh, will be meeting Sunday, October 22nd from 4 to uh, to 3.30 p.m. in the Siler home, so please be uh, aware of that. Uh, Trunk or Treat is coming up. That's October 29th from 4 to 6 p.m., uh, so please be uh, uh, know about that and get ready for that. If you'd like to help with that, be sure to uh, see Miss Deirdre, and she'll be glad to, uh, to get you signed up. We do need candy, uh, and uh, if you'd like to donate candy or prizes, uh, let Deirdre know about that. Uh, there's a missions ministry meeting coming up in Harper Hall uh, tomorrow, October the 9th. That's from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, Grant's in charge of that. If you have questions about that, his email is in the bulletin if you have any questions. East Texas Food Bank Volunteering Day is going to be on October 10th from 8.15 to 11.15. They're going to gather there uh, around 8 or uh, between 8 and 8.10. And if you have uh, any questions about that, it's got Mary Kay's name as well as Brett Hadley's name in the bulletin. Uh, but Brett, I'm going to make sure they call you because I know Mary Kay's got a lot going on. Raise your hand, Brett. If you all want to talk to Brett afterwards, he'd be glad to tell you about what all they do there. Uh, Potluck with a Purpose, Wednesday, October 18th, 530. Bring a dish to share. Uh, we're also asking folks to bring something to be donated, a canned good to be donated to the Mission House. Uh, so that uh, uh, they can have things ready for uh, handing out food for Thanksgiving. Church Under the Bridge, day of service, is Saturday, October the 21st. We're going to meet at the church at 7.45 a.m., drive to Tyler, and we'll be finished around 11.30. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact Jill Seiler, and her number is in the, the bulletin as well. October Mission Barrel, uh, we're collecting during the month of October, uh, canned food and food things for uh, the, the mission house and there's a list in the bulletin there so please be sure to read those things it's not just canned food there's cooking oil and and uh, uh, cornbread mix things like that so and then fifth quarter for youth Friday October 27th after the football game uh, please uh, if you got high school kids that would like to come be a part of that we would love for you uh, high school and junior high kids that uh, love to come together and have some time of fellowship there's a QR code in there for more information uh, in the in the uh, in the bulletin. All right. So uh, next this coming week, Monday through Wednesday, I'm going to be out of town. Uh, we've got a uh, conference meeting. I'm going to be at uh, for three days, and so uh, Tammy is going to be on call. So if there is a pastoral emergency, you can contact church office. Uh, Venus can get you Tammy's number, or you can contact Tammy directly, and uh, she can meet those uh, those pastoral needs if there's anything while I'm away. All right. Anything else? Any other announcements we need to make? If not, then let's stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord.
majesty, worship his majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise, majesty, kingdom authority. Jesus the King, majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Please remain standing. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. You'll find it on the screen above. Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. You may be seated as we prepare our hearts for worship. stand with me please as we sing love divine all loves excelling children's time. How many of you like that? 
Thank you. Sorry, it's cold. Good morning. Today, our Bible story comes from the book of Genesis. Can you tell me, where is the book of Genesis in the Bible? Anybody know? What do you think? Um, the first the it, is the, it is in the Old Testament. It's the first book in the Old Testament. It's the very first book. And there's a story that I want to tell you. This is a true story. And it's about um, Eve and Adam and the snake. Do you remember who Adam and Eve were? Who were they? That's right. They were the first people created by God. Good job. All right. So I made a little snake because part of the story um, has a snake in it. Raise your hand if you've ever seen a snake before. <sighs> Did you know that there are, there are some good snakes, right? And then there's some dangerous snakes, right? Yeah. So today our story is about a dangerous snake, okay? So I want you to keep that in mind. And this comes from the book of Genesis chapter 3. So God had made this beautiful, wonderful Garden of Eden. There were flowers, there were plants, there were fruits and vegetables. And Adam and Eve could eat whatever they wanted, right? They could eat whatever they wanted. They lived in this beautiful place. They didn't even have to work. They didn't have to go to school. They didn't have to clean up their room. I mean, this is a really great place. Raise your hand if you want to live there. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm thinking they, they had it really good, right? So then something bad happened. Do you remember that what happened with the fruit? There was one tree. There was one tree in the garden that God said, you cannot eat this fruit from this tree. You cannot even touch this tree. This is, this is the tree of, of good and evil. And they, he told them, he told Adam and Eve, don't touch the tree. Don't eat the fruit. So what do you think they did? They ate it. They ate it. Yep. So this sneaky, tricky, bad snake came along, and this was the devil, okay? And the devil came along and said, Sss. he said, Eve, hey, look at that fruit. Look, it's so good and delicious. Don't you just want one little bite? Nobody will know. It's just one little bite, and then you'll be, you'll have wisdom, my God. So what do you think Eve did? She did. She ate it. She took a bite. And then she gave it to who? Adam, and then he ate a bite too, didn't he? Yeah, and then they then they could see good and evil. Then they knew that they were naked and they needed to put clothes on, and everything changed. Everything changed. There, there was no longer this beautiful, wonderful garden where they could live all by themselves and, and not have to work and not have to go to school, and it's all their fault, right? Kind of. I mean, they're the ones that sin first, right? Do we ever sin? Yeah, we do. Do you know the devil? He's still around. He's still out there. He may not look like a little snake like this, but he, he tells us lies, and he tries to trick us into sinning. And sometimes we sin because you know what? We're not perfect. Everybody, the Bible says everyone has sinned. All of us have sinned because we're not perfect. We're not Jesus. Only Jesus is perfect, right? But thank goodness we have Jesus, okay? Because when we sin and when we mess up, he says, I, I am with you. I want to forgive you. I want to wash away your sin. I want to make you whole and pure, and I want you to be with me someday. Isn't that good news? All right, so when you hear that devil trying to tell you something, hey, just take a peek at that test over there, your friend's test. Nobody will know. What do you say? Tell him no. Mm -mm. Do the right thing. We always have, we always have a choice, right? Let's try our best to make the right choice. And even when we mess up, I want you to know Jesus still loves you, and he wants to forgive you, and he wants to make you whole again. Ready? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us when we sin. Please help us to turn to you and lean on you when we are tempted to do something wrong. In Jesus' name, amen.
please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Will you please remain standing as we sing together in Christ alone. In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand, till he returns or calls me the power of Christ, I'll stand. Please remain standing. Let us pray. For the blessings of this and all our days, we thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just this offering, but also our lives, freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use them both in this place and wherever you might take us. In your name we pray. Amen.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please remain standing. Our scripture reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 19. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat any tr- from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. The painful labor you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree which I command, from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. This is the word of the Lord. Be seated. Just a couple of uh, uh, words for before we begin. First, uh, at least you asked a question, I didn't answer it. Uh, I was a little taken back, but uh, uh, forgive me for that. Uh, we do have a new Sunday school class that has uh, uh, started, and it's in the, the blue door, which is a uh, uh, room which is on the outside of the courtyard there. If you go in the courtyard, there are several rooms. We had a sign out this morning that, that pointed to it, but I didn't think about it. if you went the other way, you would have missed it. So uh, I apologize about that, um, but that's, uh, if you want to come and be a part of that, let me know. Uh, we'd love to have you. The other thing I want to say is that uh, today is a communion Sunday. It's not our normal day for communion, but... Uh, I was gone last weekend. Jason did a great job. I really appreciate him uh, leading us and preaching last week. Um, he's actually preaching in, in, uh, at another uh, Methodist church in Turtle uh, this morning, filling in for somebody else. But, uh, but communion, we, so we moved communion to the second Sunday. And so communion is open to all. Uh, this is not a Methodist table or a Baptist table or Episcopalian table. This is the Lord's table. And the Lord invites all who would earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with God and one another. So you are welcome to come and partake. Everyone is. You'll be led by the ushers, and you can come down the center aisle, and you'll kneel down here, uh, and, uh, and then you'll receive communion there. We, we use uh, uh, bread, and uh, we use grape juice. So uh, you'll receive those in bread and cup, 
and uh, if you need it uh, non uh, gluten free, uh, we have that as well. We'll put those in little containers on the on the altar rail for you. So please know anybody is welcome to come and participate in Holy Communion with us today. So let's uh, let's have a word of prayer this morning. Gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Probably one of the hardest questions uh, to ever ask uh, in our lives is only uh, one word with three letters, and that is the question, why? Why, Lord, did my loved one have to die from COVID? Why, Lord, uh, did my mom uh, get Alzheimer's? Why, Lord, did... uh, why, why did that flood uh, come and, and wipe out that town? Why did, uh, did that tornado take out my, my loved one's home? The questions could go on and on and on, but they all begin with that three-letter word with the big question mark on the end of it of why. Why, why, why? And the analysis of it all, the question we're really asking is, you know, Lord, why do bad things happen the good people, you know, these are good people we know. We love them. They're, they're our family, our friends, our loved ones. You know, we, we know about things happening to bad people. They make bad choices, whatever. But, but gosh, Lord, these are some good people we know. Why do bad things happen to good people? We ask this why question silently in our hearts. We ask it at times with great tears in our eyes. And we even ask it with silent screams. Uh, in, in our inner being with clenched fists towards heaven and when we ask the why question we realize that uh, with all of its complexity this truth hits us it's not a question we can specifically answer this side of heaven we'd like to we want to know the answer to it but we cannot specifically know Uh, this side of heaven there are some things in this life which will not be revealed to us until uh, we reach that yonder shore Uh, you know this why question it brings with it a flood of other questions as well we ask things like well did God do this thing to my loved one could God have stopped whatever it is from happening did God if God did not intervene then why didn't he intervene does god even care about us if he allows bad things to happen to good people does god make bad things happen to good people is god being fair we ask those questions don't we it may start with that short three letter one word big question mark question but it always expands itself as we began to uh, uh, think about these things and and, 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 and ponder them in our hearts. And when we do so, our emotions run high, flooding our souls and leaving us feeling like we're doing the, a backstroke against a raging sea. And any time bad things happen, it's never easy. Any time bad things happen, it's never easy. The truth is, no one ever said it would be. In fact, when we look at scriptures, we, 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 we'd like to say that scriptures tell us that we're going to have a primrose path, that everything's going to be smooth sailing once we put our faith in Jesus Christ. But scriptures really doesn't say that at all. In fact, it says that suffering is going to be part of our lives. That's part of living in this world in which we live. The problem comes when the why question and the questions of God's fairness and things like that cause us to turn our back on God. That's when things get really difficult. That's when things go really awry. When when we face that challenging thing, the thing that makes us cry out, why God, why? And instead of running to God, Instead of falling into his embrace, instead of, 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 him, of putting our arms around him and allowing him to put his arms around us, instead, what we end up doing, what we end up doing is, is, is getting mad at God. We turn our backs on God. We, we blame God and we walk in the other direction. So rather than turn to God and embrace him, we rather turn and embrace our pain. 
My hope this morning is not to try to answer in any specific way uh, uh, the problem uh, of why do bad things happen to good people. Because like I said, we can't answer that specifically here and now. But I do hope this morning to address it in a more general way. To help us understand what's going on in this world that these things happen in the world. And what is God's Word revealing to us about where God is in the midst of it all? And I hope that understanding these things will help us to to not run away from God, but rather to run to God and to God's embrace in the midst of pain and heartache and struggle and crying out, God, why? Why? And so with that in mind, let's dive right in. Philosophers and theologians for thousands of years have wrestled with the question, why do bad things happen to good people? And for thousands of years, they've come down to sort of a philosophical, uh, a, a philosophical statement about this. They call it the problem of evil in the world. The problem of evil in the world. When bad things happen, evil is 99.9% uh, chance of being involved in that in some way, shape, or form. Now, let's make sure we're working with the same definition of evil because there's different definitions out there. I'm using the noun definition of evil, and that is evil is something that brings sorrow or distress or, or calamity into life. And as we consider the different things in the world that fit this definition of evil, they boil down to two categories. The first category is what we call natural evil in this world. And the second category uh, of evil in this world is what I call, and others call, chosen evil. Natural evil has to do with those events that bring sorrow and distress and calamity, which, which include things such as earthquakes or tornadoes or hurricanes or floods or, or diseases. Natural evil comprises of events which over which, for the most part, we have absolutely no control. We can't hold back the floodwaters. We're not God. We can't stop the hurricane. We're not God. Uh, these things happen in the world in which we live, and they cause great heartache, and they cause great harm, and, and they are seen as a, as a natural evil. And some people, though, when they look at natural evil in the world, they conclude wrongly that this is somehow uh, the actions of God bringing about something as if he's a mean and vindictive God just sitting up there bored and so he wants to do something to shake things up in the world or to let me just I'm, I'm bored so I'm going to send a hurricane through this way. You know there's a, a movie that came out a number of years ago. How many of y'all remember the movie Twister? It was all about storm chasers you know and and uh, they uh, is this group it follows this group of storm chasers and they're going and they're trying to do tests and, and research and things like that and it's a pretty dramatic movie and the graphics are pretty cool and and uh, uh, all those kinds of good things. Well, there's a scene in the movie where these storm chasers are, are sitting around somebody's I think it was somebody's aunt's table uh, and uh, they're eating some food in between chasing these storms and and there's a person with them who's kind of a a newbie to it all. If you don't know what the word newbie is, that's, that's somebody who's brand new to it, you know. And they, they, they're just getting used to being around these storm chasers, and they, uh, they got a lot of questions. And, and one of the questions they asked is, uh, uh, help me understand the, the, the scale of tornadoes. F1, F2, F3, goes all the way to F5. And so the storm chasers begin talking about, well, an F1 the winds are about this strong, and it does this kind of damage. F2, a little bit stronger, does this kind of damage. F3, and they go through, and they talk about all this type of, of damage, but they avoid, it seems, talking about the F5. And, and, you know, have you seen this one? Yeah, I've seen this one. Have you seen that one? But what about an F5? The person kind of presses the question, and, and there's a silence across the table uh, until finally one of the veterans in the room responds by saying, the F5 tornado, the most dangerous tornado there is, the highest, most powerful winds uh, uh, that have ever been recorded, they said the F5 tornado is the finger of God. 
finger of God. Now, uh, I believe that's a misunderstanding of who God is. Because that means that, that God is, is somehow uh, sitting up there and, and, and he's bored or he's mean or he's vindictive. And, and, and so he just is sitting around rolling his finger across the United States or in different places and causing these natural disasters. And, and he's doing it out of some sort of meanness. And, and that's not who God is. I don't believe that's what God is doing. Whenever tornadoes come our way. As if God is up there in heaven and, and uh, you know, he's he just dishing out illnesses like Oprah gives away free vacations or books or cars or whatever she does, you know. And, and you get a disease and you get cancer and, and you get this. That's not who God is. That's not what the scriptures reveal to us about how, who God is. He's not this mean and vindictive God up there just dishing out pain in people's lives. But there are those who live their life with that misunderstanding for whatever reason. Chosen evil, on the other hand, is that suffering or pain or heartache that comes out of, as a result of decisions that that we make or that that people make it happens as a result when someone chooses to act in a way that is negative or harmful or violent or or even deadly we think back to to throughout history we think about uh eric harris and darren klebold who in their anger and hate uh, brought down deathly violence upon their classmates at columbine we think of timothy mcveigh who whose anti-government sentiments uh, uh he got together and created a bomb and blew up the uh, the building in Oklahoma. We think about the 9-11 terrorists uh, who, who, who flew planes into the towers and into the Pentagon and into the field. And we, we think of all these folks, who have, these folks who have been angry at the world and they've lashed out in one way or another. And, and we think about the harm and we think about the violence and we think about the pain and the suffering of those families whose children were killed in the schools. And, and we think, what evil that is. Such evil that is. And that's evil that is intentional and intended. But there's also the evil that comes from people who never even intended it to be evil. They, they make bad decisions. They get in cars after having drunk a bunch of alcohol. And they run their car into a family of five in a minivan, killing every single one of them. Pain, the suffering that causes the evil that is. We must remember we're not too far off. Maybe we're not doing that behind the wheel of a car, but there is levels of pain and hurt and suffering that we cause because of our bad decisions. Maybe we lie. Maybe we gossip. Or maybe we lash out at someone. And it still causes hurt. Maybe not as much as losing a whole family, but there's still pain that happens as a result of our choices. So whether it's through natural evil or whether it's through uh, chosen evil, tragedy, calamity, sorrow, distress, suffering, all take place in this world in which we live. And it leaves us begging the question, where does it all come from? What is the source of it all? And for many, their first place to go, their first place to go is that place of blame. And the easiest person to blame is God. Why did God do this to me? Why did God uh, do this to my loved ones? Yet the question really is, is God the one to blame? Did God do something or was this the fact that we live in a fallen and broken world and we're a fallen and broken people and and the blame game is just an easy way to point fingers to understand where this all comes from to understand the source we've got to go back to the passage that Jennifer read for us today in Genesis chapter 3 if we want to understand why the world is the way it is and why things happen the way they do. We need to go back to the 
beginning of it all. You see, we need to go back to the Garden of Eden. You see, when God created humanity in His likeness, He placed them in a garden, Adam and Eve, and He gave them this perfect world to live in. The garden was a perfect place. There was no disease in the garden. There were no tornadoes in the garden. There were no drunk drivers in the garden. There was none cancer in the garden. The garden was this perfect place. We had perfect relationship with God. Adam and Eve would walk with God in the cool of the evenings, you know. What a great relationship to have with your maker, your creator. And, and you lived in this, this perfect world. And yet God wasn't creating us so that we could become robots. He, he didn't make us so that we could become puppets. He wanted a relationship with us that was based in love. And he knew that in order for us to be able to love him, we had to be able to choose to do so you know you can't force somebody to love you can you oh you may manipulate them you may uh, uh you know threaten them with physical violence or anything like that and and they may tell you they love you because they're scared of you or afraid of you but they don't really love you you see you can't force somebody to love you god knows this and so in order for us to be in a loving relationship with God, God knew that we had to be able to choose to love Him. And in order to choose to love Him, that means we also have to have the ability to not choose to love Him. Because you see, love is not love unless it is freely chosen. And in doing this, God created in that garden in the center, He put a tree the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and he said, listen, you can eat of, of any tree in this garden, uh, any of the fruit, any of the vine, any of all that, except this one tree in the middle of the garden, because that is the representation of your choice. To love me or to not love me. To be obedient to me or to not be obedient to me. To do the right thing or to not do the right thing. And sure enough, we know the story. Deary shared it with the children. We read it. Uh, here just a few minutes ago, the, the enemy got into the place. Uh, the, the, the devil in the form of a snake came and tempted Adam and Eve. And, and, uh, and as a result, uh, Adam and Eve made the wrong decision. Sin entered the picture. And because of sin, uh, the world and humanity was thus marred. It was our choice. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us are equally guilty of, of the original sin of Adam and Eve. We have that in our hearts and lives. You see, what happens is they got kicked out of the garden. And when Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, they took their sin nature with them. And, and from that point on, everyone born was born with a bent toward sinning. At the same time, they were taken out of this place of perfection, this place of no disease, no heartache, no tears, no crying, no problems, and brought into a world where such is the case. You see, we are a broken people living in a broken world. But that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of the story. You see, God in His great love for us knew that He saw us how we were living in, a, in an imperfect world as imperfect people, and He did not leave us without hope. You see, God is not some mean or vindictive God that some may think. Rather, He is loving and compassionate. And when we find ourselves in a place of pain because we live in a broken world and because we are broken people, and because we're around broken people that make bad decisions, when we live in a world with natural evil and we live in a world with chosen evil, God did not leave us there, but instead provided a way through His Son Jesus so that we might come to know redemption and the world itself, even the earth itself, might know redemption. You read in Romans, even the earth is groaning for our redemption because it longs to be redeemed too. So what did God do? He sent His Son Jesus to live a, a sinless life, to be for us the sacrificial lamb. He who had no sin came to no sin because he bore our sin upon his shoulders, upon that cross. He paid the price with his death that we could not pay for ourselves. 
And in doing so, God made a way that we might be forgiven of our sin, we might be cleansed and made new, and that we might be able to be welcomed into a new heaven and a new earth as it talks about in Revelation. You see, we've gone from the beginning of the Genesis where it talks about the Garden of Eden to a new garden, which Revelation calls the new heaven and the new earth. And we got from that place of, of messing that up to being welcomed into this only through Jesus Christ. And God in His great love for you and me made a way where there was no way. Made forgiveness where there was no forgiveness. Paid the price where we couldn't pay the price. And thus ushered us not only to a place of hope, but a place of wholeness in a world that we will one day go to that has no pain, that has no evil, that has no suffering, where no Tears shall fall, and all shall know the fullness of the love of God. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because of love. Because of love. And God, in His redemptive love, makes a way to redeem it all the good news of the gospel of jesus christ is this the pain and suffering and heartache of this broken world does not have the final say it does not have the final say this world and what we're facing and what we're struggling with does not have the final say this is not all there is what we are facing is temporary listen to what uh what Paul writes in two different places in in the New Testament. First is Romans chapter 8, verse 1. He says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that is about to be revealed. And then a little bit later on in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, Paul says, "For for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. This world is not all there is. Yes, we hurt. Yes, there is suffering. Yes, there is pain. But God does not leave us to ourselves, but rather provides for us what we need, even in the middle of the pain that we face. And He provides us with a hope for a future where we know this, what we're facing today, will not last forever. And in that we can find comfort. In that we can find peace. And in that, which is Jesus Christ, we too can know redemption. And I don't know about you, but I believe that's good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Our closing uh, song this morning is Precious Name. We're going to be singing, oh, I've almost, I've, (laughs) I almost forgot communion there for a second. Glad I looked at my bulletin. Lord have mercy. I am such a Methodist that when we don't, when we do communion on a non-first Sunday, it just throws me off completely. So uh, at this time, I'd like to invite you to join me in the communion liturgies. You find it printed in the bulletin or on the slides above. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who truly love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and dwell in charity with their neighbors and intend to live a holy life. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty, most merciful God, we confess and lament that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. Because of the remembrance of our sin is more than we can bear. Have mercy on us and forgive us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, pardon us for his past and grant that we may ever serve you in the newness of life the glory of your holy name. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night in which Christ gave himself up, he was meeting with the disciples in the upper room and he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which has been given for you. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and shared it amongst his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts of salvation, O Lord, we give you thanks. We offer ourselves to you. As we pray, O Lord, today that you would pour out your spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup and allow them, O Lord, to be for us the body and the blood of Christ. By your spirit, O Lord, make us one, one in mission and ministry to all the world until all the world comes to know the saving love of Jesus Christ. In this time of challenge or struggle or trial, as we live in this broken world, We give thanks to you, O Lord, that you made a way that reminds us that this world is not all there is, that suffering does not get the final say, and that one day we too will walk with you once again in the cool of the evening in perfect delight and love, knowing a world without such pain and sorrow. And for that, O Lord, we give you thanks in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The gifts of God are ready for the children of God. Will those that are going to be assisting today please come forward at this time.
this time I invite you to stand as we sing our closing song this morning, Precious Name, verses 1 and 4. If you're here this morning and God has moved in your heart and life and you're ready to publicly profess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to come forward. Let us celebrate this with you, pray with you to receive Christ, and uh, join the, uh, the applause of heaven uh, when one person repents and turns to the Lord. Uh, if you have already done so and you're now interested in becoming a member of uh, Bullard Methodist Church, that's something we'd like to sit down with you uh, and talk to you a little bit more about. Uh, talk about the mission and vision of the church and how you can get plugged into that mission and vision and be a part of the church family. Uh, please be sure to, uh, to reach out to me uh, either after the service or later on this week. Like I said, I'll be gone uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tammy's doing pastoral care for me in that meantime. Uh, so if you want to reach out and talk more about membership, please uh, do not hesitate to do so. Or if you just need a little more time at this altar, uh, you're welcome to come. And uh, if you need someone to pray for you, I'll be glad to do that. So let us continue to stand as we sing Precious Name. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name. been good to be together in the Lord's house. Amen? Amen. I invite you now to receive this benediction. Go forth in the power and strength that God gives you to be the children of God, who even though we pass through this world that is broken, and even though we are broken ourselves, the redemption of ourselves in this world relies on our Savior, Jesus Christ. And in Him, we can find the strength and the hope and the peace and the encouragement we need on this journey. And let's tell others about the life to come in the world we look forward to. And let's help them come to learn about Jesus so they can join us in eternity as well. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.